So many thanks for the introduction. I, I really also want to thank uh, Nanobor for the invitation, not only because, uh, because the invitation, but because I have Ramadan, and since I'm traveling, I am allowed to stop it and eat and drink. <laughs> so I advise that the next meeting, invite me, and also in Ramadan. It's always, it's always a very nice to take a gab, you know? <clears throat> Anyhow, the title looks interesting. I, I actually work, work more with human uh, uh, viruses, but I think uh, this is a, a nice work to, to speak about. Actually, if you, are, if you would like to do nanobore sequencing, yes, it's small devices, but you need other stuff. You need centrifuges, you need uh, pins, you need uh, cooling bags, and uh, all other stuff. So the idea that is not only the small machine you are do directly the sequencing. There is a lot of many stuff around it which you need to take care of. And sometimes we forget all this stuff when we go directly uh, uh, into the field. And you see, for that we have developed what's called mobile suitcase laboratory. So the idea is that uh, instead of you take very nice suitcases, put your stuff inside it, and go and find a nice table and put your stuff again, out and then take care of everything. Sometimes you wrap them in iron with your underwears and all these stuff to avoid its break while you are transporting it into harsh conditions and so on. So what we have done is that it's, it's, it's simply like this. We have, uh, bought, we have produced a suitcase lab not to transport the stuff only, but we did it that we open it, do the job, close it, and move to the next place. We are not afraid of breaking the stuff. We are not afraid of losing the stuff. We are not afraid of losing anything. Of course, in this setup, we need to have a solar panel power bags in order to power your stuff. On the top of that, you need to have a suitcase lab in order to do uh, your extraction. In case you are working with highly infectious agent like uh, Ebola, for example, or other stuff, which is really BS3, BS4 stuff, you need to use this glove box. So actually, glove box is the stuff which you can do. Be sure that you, the person which do the job uh, in the field don't get infected. So what, wh why it's special? It's, uh, I do it myself in my office, actually. And you see that we have a foam layer. All the machines are sitting in a foam layer. So if you transport it in a harsh condition, we tested th three meters, it will work, and nothing, the machine will not break. So because everything in this machine are sitting in a foam layer, this is the first thing. On a top of a foam layer, as you see here, it's a, it's a, it's a BVC layer. And this, this layer, it's a chemical resistance, so it's very stable. In order to avoid that a leak of fluid to the under, uh, uh, underneath uh, foam layer, we really glue everything with a hot glue. So everything glued, so that's mean you cannot take it out again. Yeah, so you need to buy the agent only for this, uh, the, the equipment only for the suitcase lab. But what, although other stuff we have implemented in this uh, suitcase laboratory is that we have implemented uh, two stuff. Actually, all the waste uh, we are producing, we just directly in the field, we put it in this uh, sharp container waste, in this uh, yellow stuff you see on the screen. And we have 2% bleach that we disinfect while we are uh, working. On the same time, of course, if I am transporting my stuff, I will not take a disinfection solution because uh, if it's uh, anything, having the solution will destroy all the machines. So what we have done is that we used wipes. It's not the children wipes for cleaning, but actually this is a wipe exactly to uh, uh, disinfect uh, TB in 30 seconds, for example. Yeah. So this is all about the suitcase. This is why it's very important to have such a system that you go in the field and you don't afraid that you lose some stuff or forget something or something is not working or anything happening because of the transport condition. So it's an all-of-one uh, mobile uh, system. Actually, I know who is uh, people working with veterinary science here? Please raise hand. Oh, that's nice. Many thanks. This side, oh, we have, yeah. So we are a minority here. So I'm a veterinarian by study. But anyhow, foot and mouth disease virus and lumpy skin disease virus are two nasty viruses, which is very important worldwide. Why? 
the foot and mouth disease virus. It's a very small virus. It has uh, uh, eight KB, the, the Cabri box viruses. It's in a large box viruses, which almost have 150 KB. And that's a DNA virus, and the foot and mouth disease is an RNA virus. So we are speaking about two different viruses, small RNA virus and large DNA virus. The thing is that the foot and mouth disease virus infect cloven ho hoofed animals, so the uh, uh, cattle, sheep, goat, also the pigs can take the infection. The problem is that with foot and mouth disease virus, you have seven distinct serotype. They are diff completely different from each other. And the only way to identify the serotype is not the PCR, is sequencing. So the people are amplifying the genes, and this is, this is uh, these two viruses really a great example of where the BCR has no chance. Because you have a lot of mutation coming up and up again, and, and in this Cabri box viruses, the three viruses, they are very close to each other. So that means the only way and the recommendation from the OIE to use sequencing for the differentiation, not PCR. For that, this is a very a, a nice field where sequencing is, all, is the only winner here. So what we have that we have just tried to, to, to do some uh, differentiation using the nanoboost sequencing here. And as you see here, we have used a seed case lab, and th the idea is that in this case of, of, um, of, uh, of uh, foot and mouth disease virus, at that time we are using this, the direct RNA sequencing was not available. We need to try it now, but we need to do go through a long library preparation from cDNA into uh, using the ligation kits and then sequencing. So it takes us almost uh, five hours. While with a Cabrio box virus, which is a DNA virus, is stuff which really easy because we use the rapid barcoding kits where we can do sequencing in less than two hours uh, uh, time from extraction to identification. The one thing we have used, we didn't use any, uh, any uh, open software. Uh, last, la the speaker last, uh, uh, yesterday, they was talking about the people from the clinician don't like the bi bioinformatic, and the bioinformatic didn't like the clinician. I have a problem with the bioinformatician, yeah, this is a very big problem with me. The problem is that whenever I have a problem, I discuss it with them, I never ha have a solution or an answer, yeah, and it takes too much time, they have also too many stress and so on. So what we did, what we did, we said, okay, guys, let's do it quick and dirty. I don't know how, taught, uh, how I feel it like that, but anyhow, it's quick and it is like this. We have a genius program. We just download all the sequence available for Cabri box viruses and also all the sequence available for foot and mouth disease virus. We have download this locally to the computer. The genius has a very nice option that you can do local blast search offline. And this is what we have done. We just download our sequences and do this fast queue and then just do blast search using genius locally, offline. It works. I must admit that it works, and it works very good. And I didn't, I didn't uh, consult a bioinformatician. This is a very nice thing about the story. <laughs> Don't take it personally, please, if you have a bioinformatician here. <laughs> so anyhow, the, the, the RNA that is, uh, uh, we, what we have done, we have the seven serotypes. We've done the sequencing without some filtration. We don't need sequence more than 10 KB because anyhow it will not work, yeah, because the virus already is maximum 10 KB. But at the end, it works and we have sequence. And, and the, the, the interesting thing here that the whole genome, if you speak about the whole genome, the whole genome, it didn't give you a good results. Why? Because if you do blast with the whole genome, the problem is that the homology between the virus are high and they have only a small room to play with. But you know, if you focus onto one gene like B1 gene here, you see that you have a very good specificity to identify the, the, the serotype. That's mean if you are doing foot and mouth disease virus sequencing, it's better to focus on the B1, B1 gene. So in this case also, whole genome will not help but a focus on a specific, a blast search against a specific gene like P1 gene will do uh, uh, the job. 
in, in, the, in case of uh, the, uh, the cabrio box viruses, which is uh, three viruses, lump skin, sheep box, and goat box, you see we have done this with rabbit barcoding kits, and we have uh, got a very nice result. We did also an offline blast search here. And as you see, in this, in this case, the, the, the stuff changed. If you search for a whole genome or a specific gene, both can do the job and both can do the differentiation in a very high uh, specificity to uh, the specific viruses. That's mean in this case, both gene and whole genome uh, will work. So at the end is that I can summarize this part as like this. So actually the mobile street case lab helped us to move outside the laboratory. Of course, sequencing, if you see when I, when I, when a few years back when I saw the 454 from Roche and uh, after that the Illumina machine, I said, it's not my stuff because we need to go to the field. But Minayan really helped us to go directly to the field and do sequencing on site. With the mobile suitcase lab, we have it in step forward that we have everything we need. Um, I'm, I'm happy to say that we did that without the help of bioinformatician <laughs> using the Genius program. Genius, they told me, don't use our program with nanobore sequencing. We're using, and it works. So uh, yeah, anyhow, this is, this is a, go a good news. But everything we do it is an offline blast search, which help us in the field. Because if you go directly in the field, internet is a big issue, even uh, if you work in a, in a uh, uh, even in Germany. 60% cover the internet. Horrible. Yeah. So why I'm speaking about foot and mouth disease virus? and lumpy skin disease virus. Food is rare to cause a human disease, yeah? But see, always when we focus about uh, animal viruses, we are very selfish and say, okay, animal viruses can cause zoonotic diseases or food and bone diseases. They are not zoonotic, they are not food borne infections. But at the end, if, if this devastating disease come, it affect the economy, it affect the poor people, and it stop the trade and stop animal transport. So it's a devastating animal diseases, which at the end indirectly can affect the hu hu human budget and human pockets. And this is very important if you are in a, in a remote area in, in Africa and they have one or two cattle, if they get affected, they lose the whole capital of the, you know. So we need to focus more on, on, on a side, not a zoonotic or foodborne, but also on another uh, issue. I have two minutes, so I need, I'm, I, everybody waiting for this topic. Actually, I have a friend with an archivist, and he, he was at my home and said, oh, Ahmed, we need to do work together. I told him, you work with stones, I work with viruses. We don't match to each other. But anyhow, <laughs> while we are speaking that, he was opening a new, uh, a new this is the entrance of an Egyptian tomb, and he would like to, to, to uh, he said to me, we have some problems, some decay on the, on the surface, and we don't know what is that, and we don't know what, how we deal with that. So I told him, okay, decay is maybe fungus. Uh, I told him, let's do microbiome analysis, yeah? And actually, I was sitting in the hotel and received uh, nice swaps from there because, you know, uh, they are very restricted. I hope this is not uh, the Egyptian government not taking personally. But um, uh, uh, the, the stuff is that we need to have a, a special, uh, 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 let's say, um, um, uh, approval in order to do that. But anyhow, we collected sample from a place where they have a decay, a place which is very looks normal, and two places which have some decays. We see some differences. We see actually some difference between these sites. But what was very important is that we see some microorganisms which are very resistant to harsh condition. On the same time, we see microorganisms which in case of uh, a, a, a people suffering from immune depressed patient or have a lot of stress or something like that, these can cause a respiratory infection. I'm speaking about a tomb which nobody can allow to enter, not the, the very nice tomb in the, uh, the Valley of Kings so you can enter, no problem. I'm not saying here that, uh, that you will get a respiratory infection from visiting uh, the open Egyptian tombs. It's not like this. This is for record yeah, and for the Egyptian security service. 
but uh, for the uh, for but at the end we have found some stuff we have found some microorganism which have an indication that this is was a bio before that the people during the christian time they was hiding in these tombs uh, uh, at this time and they also with their animals so we see some microorganism dogs is normal but we see also some indication that horses were there and this is from the analysis is not a far away uh, analysis that I tell you it's 4,000 year old the sequence no but I think it's, it's it tell us uh, something this is was also quick and dirty I must admit if we do it next time we do it more professional and more in a better way yeah uh, but um, what I would like to tell you an overall summary. What you know, uh, I don't. Uh, I, uh, I hope that the people from Nanobo don't hate me if I have this example. But this is Nanobo for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Nanobo sequencing. It's 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 a kind of mix between technology and uh, 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 and something which which you can maintain, you can use uh, with a nature motor. Yeah. So this is this is uh, an example of uh, Oxford uh, Nanobo for me. So don't take it personally, guys. Here and please invite me next time. You know it's very important. So uh, I would like to acknowledge my friends here in Egypt, which help us to do the sequencing on site. I think uh, also uh, uh, the the people I work in the University of Göttingen, Zoran Hansen, Susanna, and Anna, and also our col collaborator from the reference lab in FLI, where we have all the reference strain of foot and mouse disease virus and lumbar skin disease virus so that we can evaluate our methods.